In this video, we're gonna be talking about the default settings for the user interface and the current settings for the user interface. So basically the settings that I wanna see all of the time versus sometimes. So sometimes would mean I open up a job and it has some strange colors on it. It's a Bobcad file that someone else may have made and I don't really like the color scheme or whatever it is that they have on that file. So we have a certain set of settings for specifically the current document that's open and then our own default. So you get to those by going up to file and then right down here to settings. You can also find a shortcut little button right up here just above the create 2D next to the save as shortcut button there. And this is gonna get you into the settings as well. Now, when it first opens up, we have our system settings. So the system settings are gonna be things like the general tab where we have our directories and our data folder storage. We have our backups and backup directory. We have our options for whether or not we have auto save on or off. And remember, if you turn it on, you can't go anything lower than 15 minutes. That's going to be your minimum there. Right down here, we have our keyboard and mouse options. So enter equals tab. All that does is makes it so that when I hit enter on my keyboard, instead of creating something, it just tabs me to the next box. Right here, we have zoom to cursor. So that's wherever we place our cursor when we zoom in and out, it's going to go to that location. And then right down here, we have invert scroll wheel. So if our scrolling feels backwards to you, just go into the invert scroll wheel, click it, and it'll flip the way that we scroll in and out. Right down here is if you have a 3D mouse, you can use it, you just turn it on. And then right down here is for the cam tree, we have these little flyouts right here along the cam tree now. And this is just whether or not those are enabled or not. They give you a chance to make little changes like speeds and speeds and program numbers. And just a lot of quick changes you can make right through the cam tree here instead of opening up the features. Now right here we have the customize ribbon. This allows us to move things from one of these areas up here to a new location. One of the ones that I always heard about was the extract edges function, which is currently on create 2D, and then it's under the utilities menu. So if you expand the button group here, we'll see right down here is extract edges. Now you can actually move that around. You can move it up or you can move it down and that'll actually change the position of where it's sitting in that one window. But you can also delete it. You can remove that thing completely and you can put it in a new location if you want. Right down here we have our size and whether it's a large button and whether it's a split button or a drop down kind of button and then your access key right here. So if you don't want it in here, you can remove it and then I'll say yes. And then under utilities, I'll go down to reorganize and I'm just going to expand the button group and then I'm going to click right in here and I'm going to take my feature that I had before and I'm going to move it back in there. So I'm going to go find extract edges in here. So I'll say extract edges and this one here has the full drop down. So I'm going to take that one and then I'm going to go ahead and add it in and it's now going to be on that tab right there. So we'll be able to check that out. As soon as we get out of here, we'll see that that's going to show up on the new tab. So I'll say apply. And now that's where my extract edges is going to be. And I could actually move it. So I'm going to move it up next to the clean up optimize. And then I'm going to change it to a large button. And I'm going to make sure it's a split button right there. And then when I'm done, I can just hit apply. Now the next settings is going to be the customized shortcuts. So this is where we can add shortcuts. All you're going to do with this is you're going to click on the object that you'd want to create a shortcut for. And then you're gonna click in the add new shortcut key and on your keyboard, you're gonna hit the keys for the shortcuts you want. So I'm gonna say control Q and it's currently unassigned. So if I wanted to make my ISO eight a shortcut, it can now be control Q. Now, if we click something that gives us an assignment like control A says select all is already assigned to that, we do not want to assign over that because it'll end up doubling the commands. Now, those are your general settings for the system. Then we have default and current document settings right here. Now the document default settings and the current document settings are the exact same settings. It's just that the document default settings are for us to be able to go in and set up all the settings that we don't want to have to change again. The current document settings are just for the window that's currently open and it only affects the window that's open. So if you open a file and it's got some weird colors on it, the current document is what you're going to modify. But if you're trying to go in and set up your system for the first time of opening it, you're going to want to do it under the default document. So right here we have our units. We can tell it whether we want inch, millimeter, centimeter, decimeter, meter, or custom. And then right down here you have your decimal places or dialog digits. 
and then you have your standard coordinates. This is X, Y, Z. That's how you're going to fill out your information. You could also say you want lathe coordinates, and this is going to give you a Z, an X, a Y, and then you get to tell it whether you're drawing in radius or diameter mode. In this case, I'm going to leave it on the standard coordinates there, and then we'll go to the display tab. Now, the display tab is where we get to go in and actually choose the colors that we see for everything that we do. So the background color, we can just click this drop down, and we could change this to something like a gray here. And then that's going to be my color. So we won't see this change. If I go and hit apply, it's not going to change anything. But at the bottom of the screen, we have apply to document. This will actually change it to the current document as well. So we can make a gray background for the document that's currently open. So I'll say apply that to the document. And then if I just say apply, we'll see the background just change the shade there. Let me make it a little bit more drastic. We'll go to a black background. And then we could say apply that to the document and then hit apply. And now I have a black background for my part. Really, I'm just going to leave it up here at the white and then say again, apply to the document and then apply. And that'll just be my background color. Now, the settings that we get to set up are things like selection. Now, the selection is when you've actually clicked on an object and then taken your cursor off of that object. It's going to show up as this bright red. When we're just hovering over an object and about to click on it, it's going to highlight the part. And so that's going to show up as this bright pink here. The lines and arcs and all the 2D that I draw is going to show up as this color blue. And then my previews are all going to show up as this color orange. Now, if I go down a little bit further, we have our solids. They're going to show up as this purple, but only if this check mark is turned on. So if I don't have this check mark turned on, this is going to show up as the same entity color as what we have set for the entity. So we want to make sure that's checked with a different color. Same with dimensions and text. If you want those to come out with a different color, you're going to leave this button checked. In my case, I'm going to uncheck the dimension text option so that it shows up as the same color that I draw my entities with. Down here, we have our axis, our crosshairs there. So that's going to be a blue. Our, our, our UCS plane is when we're working with a UCS, anything other than the top UCS, it's going to show an active plane and you're going to be able to see kind of where you're working on and where you're drawing. If you don't want to see the plane, you could change it right down here with the UCS plane display just by turning that down. Right down here, the last one is our toolpath. So with the check mark on this one, it means anytime we generate a toolpath, it's going to show up as this green color. And that's just going to make it a little bit different than the rest of everything else so that we really see that toolpath standing out compared to the rest of the job. Now down here you have your show axis, which is the crosshairs, so the axis of X and Y, as well as the gnomon, which is that little symbol there in the middle. So you can tell it whether or not to show it. Down here you tell it how many tick marks you want to go in each direction, so I have it set to 100 inches in every direction. Right down here we then have our quality. So we're set about a quarter of the way up. If you have a graphics card in your computer, feel free to just turn this up to about halfway. No real reason to bring it up all the way and leave it there all the time, but a nice graphics card should be able to handle that no problem. If you do have a problem with your graphics card or computer doesn't have a graphics card, run it down a little bit lower. By leaving it just a little bit lower, you're not going to be processing as hard all the time. And then when you need to turn it up, you can actually go to the current document and you can go to the display and you could turn it up specifically on that specific document if that was what you were trying to do. Right down here you have your wireframe for solids and this is just going to thicken the exterior lines of those solids make them a little easier to see. Again right here is our UCS plane display so bring it to the right and you're going to turn it transparent. Bring it to the left you're going to make it more opaque. Down here you have your orthogonal view it's just your perspective distance it's how you view the system. And then right here's your selection. If you have a hard time picking geometry it just gives you a hard time clicking on things. Try moving this to the right a little bit. Try clicking some geometry, see if it gets a little bit easier. But slowly bring this to the right, and eventually it'll be a sweet spot for where you're going to have a good time clicking on your geometry. It's going to let you click a lot easier than if you don't mess with this option. So over here, we then have the CAD tab, and this is going to be where we find a lot of our tolerances for the CADs. So our CAD tolerance is set to a tenth, so 0 .0001. Our chain select tolerance is going to be set to 1,000, so 0 0.001. 
And so what these numbers really mean is just the quality of everything. The chain select is specifically about gaps inside of the geometry. And at what point do we not look at these gaps? So anything below a thou, and we're going to try and jump across that gap. Anything above a thou, and we're going to leave it as a gap, and we will not be able to jump across or chain select through there. Right down here, we have our snap increment, which we can find down here at the bottom. And so this is just our distance for what our defaults are going to be for the snap increment, the angle, as well as the scale. Right here, we have our text. And all we're doing here is picking a default text that we want to open up whenever we launch our text box. So we have a choice of Windows or Bobcad, and then you choose whatever font you want. You have your height, your angle, your slant, your ratio, and your vectorize options. So I'm actually going to go in here. I'm going to set this to Bobcad font number four. It's AFNT04. And I'm just going to set the height of it to one inch because I rarely make text that's 196 thousandths tall. I'll more likely make something that's one inch. So I'm just going to go in and put that in now. Now, right below that, we have our point style. So you have all the different types of points that you can draw with. I'm going to keep it as just the dot and then you have your point size. Now right here under dimension, just like with the text earlier, we're just trying to go in and set up the defaults for when we're doing our dimensioning. These are not locked in in any way. You can actually modify these while you're doing your dimensioning. So you can choose a font to use. So you have Windows or Bobcad. You have your default text height. I'm gonna set that to a quarter of an inch. And then down here, you have your dimension value. So how many decimal places are going to output for that value? What's your scale factor? And whether or not you have extra zeros showing up after to bring it to four places if you want it to. Down here is your tolerances. So you could say, give me a single tolerance, give me a symmetric tolerance, or give me a custom tolerance. You can type those in. Right down here is your witness lines and then your text lines there. Then down here we have our arrows. It's just what the arrows look like. So you could set up your left arrows, your right arrows, the length and the width, and then whether or not they're on the inside or the out, whether or not they're on both sides or just the left or the right or even none, and then whether or not your leaders are going to be on the left side, the right side, both or none, and then your leader arrow length. Right down here we then have our cam tab, and this is where we can find our cam tolerances. So we have our tolerance for the two axis, the three axis, and the lathe. And so two axis is going to be set to a tenth, and then three axis and lathe default to a half a thou. And you can change these to whatever you want. Just know that two axis and lathe, this is the only place you're going to be able to set them. The three axis you'll be able to modify whenever you want while you're making those tool paths. And then down here is your default machining order. So right here you have your milling job. You have it set up as individual tool per machine setup, individual feature, or individual tool. We'll talk more about those in some later videos. So you have your milling job, your turning job, your mill turn job, and then your wire EDM job. And this is just all the options for each one of those individual jobs. If you're not using a mill turn, don't worry about this setting. It's not going to affect anything on your software. And then down here is just your nesting job. What's the order? Do we cut the holes first? Do we cut the dados first? Or do we do the part? Do we cut by tool number? Or do we cut by feature? So I'm going to leave it by part. So it finishes a part, but it's going to do all the holes first. And then when I'm all done, if I like these settings and I want to convert them to the page that I'm currently working on, I'd say apply to the document as well. And then we can just hit OK. And now this document's going to have all the same settings as my normal default settings. And that concludes the video for the settings tab from inside the version 32.